Hello everyone, it's your host Divine. Thank you all for joining us today for another episode of Hope with Nevins with Teens podcast. Yay! Again, I am your host Divine. Today's date is January 13, 2024. And today's topic is Do Not Get Crushed. Part 1. Our memory verse is taken from 1 Kings 11 verse 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Mm, homeboy was not picky. Kings 11, 1 to 11. Again, but Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. 2. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Ooh, somebody's been disobedient. 3. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines and his wives turned away his heart okay pause pause i i'm sorry dude has 700 wives how did he get that many princesses 700 i thought he was supposed to be the wisest man on earth at the time 700 homeboy was not picky at all and he was certainly was not thinking straight okay sorry enough of my rants back to the reading Four, for it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. Mm, boy is not living up to legacy. Five, for Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. 6. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully ooh, after the Lord, as did David his father. 7. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemos, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Mm, dude really messed up. Wait, wasn't this the same Solomon who offered 10,000 points offerings to God? Keyword, went not fully after the Lord. 8. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Mm-mm-mm. That's why it's not good to have 700 wives. In fact, that's, not, that's why it's not good to have more than one. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. 10. And he had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. 11. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rent rend the kingdom from thee and i will give it to thy servant okay message for the day once more for those who are just tuning in for the first time the open levels is written by daddy geo so it's in first person and i will occasionally jump in to make a few comments like i just did in the bible reading sexual sin usually starts from a harmless crush which can be described as a brief but intense infatuation for someone guys don't play innocent we all know we've been there it has the ability to make you lose your sleep until you see or speak with a fellow okay i don't think it was ever that bad when one of my sons told me that he was always excited to resume in the office every day because he would see his secretary, I knew he would soon get crushed by that crush. So I encouraged him to cut off every form of communication with her immediately because the Bible says, if an and or an eye will prevent you from making it to heaven, cut it off or pluck it out. Matthew 5, 28-30 thank god he listened to me 
and his destiny was preserved. Yay! Interjection. This reminds me of the Bible verse that says, Guard your heart above all else because out of it flows the issue of life. There's also Bible verses that talk about like, if you think you're strong, you better stand before you fall. There's one I love from James 4, from verse 7, I believe. It talks about submitting yourself to God and then you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. And there are multiple verses that talk about serving the Lord your God with all your heart, all of it, all your mind, all your soul. Basically serving God with your whole entity. No looking back, no one leg in the world, one leg out, no one leg in my way, my pleasures in my flesh, not one leg out. And I know like sometimes it, we struggle with that a lot. Especially when it's something that we hold on there. One of the things we talked about in the previous Open Levels was that an idol is basically anything you put above God. So if you cannot put it aside for God, if you cannot fast from it, whether that is social media or having to look at certain things, you know, pornography is a very big thing that people tend to shy away from, but it's something that needs to be talked about because people do it and it's like it's on social media now, so you don't even have to try to like actually go for it before it comes to you and it takes really the spirit of god to shut it down because i mean bodies are fleshy like and we're subject to the things we hear see and all of that so yeah i'm so glad that guy listened because that could have ended really bad but some people don't listen some people don't try some people don't ask god for help and they end up getting crushed remember you cannot resist the devil without first submitting to god because remember the devil has been around before you were born your grandparents were born basically he's been in this business of like deceiving and trying to steal away believers from the lord since like the beginning of time if you know what i mean I don't want to mention them, but Adam and Eve, cough, cough. Yeah, so, okay, back to the reading. King Solomon, with all his wisdom, was crushed by his loss for strange women who took his heart away from God. Pause. Guys, please, association is important. Are you listening to me? Importante. Muy importante. Very important. Like, if you still don't understand what I'm saying, association is important. There are many Bible verses, many. So you cannot tell me that, oh, it was in the Old Testament kind of vibe. No, there are multiple. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. Um, Blessed is a man that walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, not standing in the way of sinners, not sitting in the seat of scornful. Psalm 1 verse 1. Proverbs 13 20. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Apostle Simon always says that, you know, if there are five, if you have five foolish people in your friend group, check again because there's actually six. P.S. If you didn't get that, you're the sixth person. You are basically the environment you create for yourself. And sometimes we don't have, we don't have power over like, you know, being placed in a certain geographical location, but we do have power over who we surround ourselves with, you know, who we surround ourselves with, who we listen to. And I'm not saying that you should like, you know, you see somebody who's clearly an unbeliever and just like, oh, carry your face and walk away, not even high. But you should keep a distance. And if you know you struggle with association, low self-esteem, or you tend to fall really, really hard to other people's perception, yeah. Set boundaries for yourself. Like, I'm not talking about the whole, oh, Jesus dined with sinners. Yeah, that was Jesus. You, you you are you so you know you okay we are all on this walk but it's also a very individual and personal walk so you know your boundaries and please 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 make the holy spirit your best friend like you cannot go wrong with the holy spirit like you cannot go wrong with the holy spirit he is your companion he is your comforter your guidance so make him your priority because if you try to pray from the flesh you cannot please god that is literally a bible verse you cannot please God in the flesh. Romans 8 verse 8. Psalm 119 verse 110. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed away from your precepts. 
Okay, please, guys. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. It keeps us from getting in the wrong entanglements, from going in the wrong path. So please make sure you're dwelling on it daily. You have to make it a discipline, okay? God was gracious enough to give us his commandments, his laws, his precepts, and they literally shape us. Apostle Selman said it's like the mirror we look at that, you know, checks our life. And if there's anything that's not of Christ in there, we can, you know, identify it and correct it accordingly. So please make it a daily habit to study the word. I don't care how small you start. You got to stay consistent and grow into it. Okay. There's a Bible verse in Psalm 119, I believe 11, somewhere around 11 to 16. It says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay, back to the reading. In the latter days of his life, he shouted in regret, Vanity of vanities, all is vanities. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 2. Pause. Okay, Ecclesiastes, sorry. I know I keep si getting sidetracked, but Ecclesiastes is such an interesting chapter, especially if you're really big on philosophy and, you know, just really big on that. Yeah, you got to read Ecclesiastes. And at the end of Ecclesiastes, throughout Ecclesiastes, it just talks about how basically what we see, the world, it's just vanity. Like, vanity, it's not worth it. it sometimes it really doesn't have as much value like you can sow and not reap and things don't always happen the way they should and how, how are you supposed to make it work there's literally nothing new under the sun there's just a bunch of contemplations in ecclesiastes and it wraps it up in a beautiful way towards the end basically the conclusion was like yo let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of a man for god shall bring every work into judgment and with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil you know it doesn't seem like sowing and ripping may be in effect or people are not getting punished as they should god is keeping scores believe me he is yeah, you cannot have mercy without judgments. That is one of my favorite sayings. Okay, back to the reading. My dear child, don't engage in things that will crush your future. Ignore vanities and focus on doing things that please God. I pray that your tomorrow will be great in Jesus' name. Okay, pause one more time. I don't know if you guys know the story about like Isaac's sons and like this whole rivalry between Esau and Jacob yeah Esau sold his birthright for a bowl of stew guys yeah in the rules 12 or 16 there was like this whole context that I'm not gonna get into and then they brought up Esau they were like will there be any fornicator or profane persons as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright so yeah you saw it does get a lot of it and you're probably like <laughs> duh i wouldn't sell my birthright for a bowl of stew okay think about it metaphorically how many times did you know what was right for you to do when you chose something else even though you do it was not what you were supposed to do i feel like i'm giving myself a lot of shit right now like you pick up social media even though you know you're supposed to be doing your assignments, your homework. You don't schedule yourself so you end up talking to people for hours and hours and not being able to achieve anything for yourself. Or instead of reading your Bible, yeah, I'm going there. You pick up TikTok, 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 TikTok did not save your soul. I know it's empty, guys, but you gotta ask the Lord for grace and strength to follow Him. Pick up your cross. It includes sacrifices, but it's worth it. It's worth it for you. It's worth it for you, and you know it. You want a bright future. The power of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter into the perfect day. I forgot where that was taken from, but it's a Bible verse. Guys, please. And I pray that the Lord will give you the grace to do the grace to as you choose to do so the action point be wise crush now before it crushes you i know there's a lot of crushes in there but basically be wise crush that thing that you know that vulnerability 
that can cost you your relationship with God. If you don't know what it is, ask God to reveal it to you and to start working on it for you before it crushes you. Okay? I don't want to go too in depth now, but you think of Samson, it was crushes, blending into the wrong association, Delilah, um, <laughs> cough, cough. For David, yes, I know, even David, it was Bathsheba. Actually, no, it was David himself, but Sheba was just like minding her own business. For Judas, it was money, greedy, greedy. For Esau, it was his stomach. What's it for you? What's it for me? Okay, guys, I hope that you do do some reflection. Thank you so much for joining us today. Stay tuned for another episode of Hope and Evans with Teens podcast. Thank you and bye.